morning, good people of the world. Another vlog is here. That means another day is here. Hope you're having a good one. Mine's just beginning. I got the lumber off my trailer that was on there. I didn't want it anymore. Weighing me down, so I left it here in Minnesota. The nice people in Wadena, or is it Wadena? I still don't know how to say it. Minnesota, now we're headed down to Shakopee, Minnesota, which is part of Minneapolis. We're gonna pick up some shingles and we're gonna bring those home. Nice. We hurried up, now we gotta wait. That part's not so nice. That, that can work there, that's nice. I specifically parked here so I could look at it while I waited. It's beautiful. Air ride front suspension. That's uh, an upgrade I'm doing to this truck eventually too. It's a little further down the list, but that is uh, definitely on the list. I'm also taking my side fairings off to make my sleeper look like that. I wanna do a little bit of a frame extension. I have to be careful because up in Canada, we can't have an overall unit length of more than 75 feet or whatever that is in meters. Sometimes I speak in feet, sometimes I speak in meters. I don't think we can have a wheelbase more than 7.2 meters, which is what, 280 inches? I think, I wanna say. Pass the Googles. One second here. Let's... What is 7.2 meters in feet? 7.2 meters is equal to 23 feet, 7.465 inches. Okay. What is 7.2 meters in inches? 7.2 meters is 283.465 inches. So 283 inch wheelbase max on the truck from the center of the front axle to the center of the rear axle. I believe that's how that works. I gotta do more research yet before I get this done. I don't want a wheelbase that long because I'll be over length overall. I pull 53 foot uh, open deck trailers. And right now, my overall unit length is about 73 and a half. Nope. 73 feet. Or 72 and a half. I have about two feet up to the 75 foot mark. So I'm going to measure it all out, obviously, before I commission the work. I want to add 24 inches onto my frame. Two feet. And then that'll give it more of a look like this. It won't be quite as long as this, I don't think but uh, it'll be a little bit longer. I can hear all my European followers right now typing vigorously and frantically. Why would you do that, Trucker Josh? Well, because it looks cool. It's also a smoother ride. The longer your wheelbase, the smoother the ride. And uh, So that's, that's a big reason too. But anyways, uh, all that aside, I'm sitting here waiting. My appointment was for 3 p.m. My original appointment this morning was at 10 a.m. But with my delivery out in Wadena, taking a little longer than I wanted it to, uh, I couldn't make it for the 10 a.m. appointment, so we called and we rescheduled. We rescheduled it for three o'clock, which was very unfortunate, because that's pretty late in the day. I wanted to be home tonight yet. But I figured, whatever, I'll get here at three o'clock. I'll be loaded maybe out of here by four or 4.30. Huh, huh? <laughs> no, there's like 10 other guys here that were hoping for the same thing. 
and they all got here before me. This is a pretty big place. I think they're loading one, two, three guys, four guys, no, oh, well, five. Five trucks at a time, at least. There might be more around the corner that I can see. So they're loading five trucks at a time. So technically, it, it should be soon. It shouldn't take too long. So once I get loaded, it's very easy to tie it down. And then we're just gonna book it back. It's gonna be tight. To be honest, it's gonna be tight to get back tonight. As long as I can get to that border, over the Canadian border, I get a few extra hours added on Canadian hours of service, and I can get to our yard. And then I can sleep there, and I have to deliver this load into Winnipeg first thing tomorrow morning, go back to our yard, get rid of my trailer, and bring this truck in to get serviced. The place where I get my truck serviced at is PBX in Blumenort. Uh, they have excellent service there. Their shop is excellent. I've, I've been very happy going there. And once I find a shop that uh, treats me really well and that does good work, I, I stick to them like glue. They can't get rid of me. And they, they haven't screwed up once. So they've actually caught a few things too that I didn't even know needed to be looked at because I look over my truck every day. They look over it as well. When they do my service, they go over the entire truck and see if there's anything else that needs to be done. It's in their best interest because they also want to make money off anything that might need to be done on, on top of the service, obviously. But they're not gonna do any work without me giving the permission for it, right? So they're gonna go over my truck, see if there's anything that needs to be looked at soon, make a little list for me, and then I, when I get the list, I can look at it myself and be like, eh, we can wait till next time for this, uh, we should do this. You know, that way there's more eyes on my truck than uh, just mine. The more the better, because I, I, I could miss things. You know, uh, my heated mirrors weren't working for for uh, an example last year. It was summertime. I didn't know they weren't working. I don't use them in the summertime. I don't use them. To, I use the mirrors. I don't use the heated part of them. They noticed that my heated mirrors weren't working. So I got them to fix it before I would even need it. Because the only way I would have found out is once they iced up in wintertime and then they didn't heat up and defog so that I could use them, right? And then I'd be without mirrors until I get them fixed. That's not good. So they, they found that for me. I appreciated that and they, they earned my business. I also like to support local as much as I can and support the uh, the businesses in my area as much as I can. Not every business in my area has earned my business, but uh, the guys that service my trucks sure did. They, uh, they've they gone above and beyond for me every time and they're very friendly. Oh, are they, is he gonna pull me? Oh, 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 oh! That was disappointing. The forklift driver came, I think he thought that I was the truck he was looking for, came right up to my nose, uh, looked at my truck for a while, looked at his paperwork, looked at his truck, and he drove away. Shucks. Got my hopes up, bud. Anyways, hopefully we'll get loaded up here quick and we'll be on the road. We're gonna make, be making a beeline. I want her to be home tonight. Like, in bed with my wife. And waking up tomorrow with her and having breakfast with her in the morning. Oh, hey, buddy Mike's here. Check this out. There he is. I'm not the only one. Cool. All right, I'm gonna focus on uh, paying attention here. Hopefully I'll get loaded soon and we'll chat once I'm out of here. And the race is on. I am loaded up and booking it back. I've got just enough hours to get back to the border. As long as I don't mess around. As long as people don't mess around with me. Before I left the shipper, I took a look on Google Maps and it looks like there's an accident over on I-494 on the west side of Minneapolis. So I'm taking this road, what is this, 169? From Shakopee through Minneapolis up to the 94. It goes around the accident. Is that 169, is that what I'm on here? I don't usually take this road, but it's a freeway as well. My point is that I saw that there was a delay over on the freeway, so we're going through here to save time. Hopefully avoid all accidents. Definitely not gonna get in one ourselves. This is such a big city. Oh no! Brake lights! No! No! This is what I was trying to avoid. Okay, maybe this was a bad idea. I still stick to my, my theory. I think it would have been longer going the other way. It's just rush hour right now. 
Okay, we're okay. We're okay. Don't panic. Don't panic. I'm not panicking. You're panicking. Stop panicking. We don't have too very long to spare at all. Like, I don't even think I got time to stop and fuel. Google, you lied to me. You said there was no traffic on this route. That's why I took this route. Why would you lie to me? That is not very nice. Well, either way, we're gonna get out of the city here, get onto the freeway and hopefully have no other delays because if I have too much more of a delay than this, I'm not gonna make it. Like, I'll still get my delivery done tomorrow. Okay, we're stopping, we're stopping, we're stopping. Okay, why are we stopping? It's the harmonica effect, not the harmonica, the accordion effect. Harmonica. Man, if it's this bad on this highway, imagine how bad it is over there. This is kind of a bummer. But don't worry. Trucker Josh has got this. We'll still get back. We'll make it. We can do this. We're just gonna stay focused and... I already ate supper, so I don't need to stop to eat. I've got water right here. All I need is for everyone to get out of my way. Why are you stopping again? Why are you stopping this traffic or accordion? Yeah, we're on North 169 here. That's, that's what it is. Oh yeah, look, we're moving better up there. Okay, that's it. I think we got through it. What is everybody doing on the road? Go home. Slowing me down. Do any of you live in this area? Did I make a poor choice taking 169? I came from Shakopee. So that's on the southwest corner of Minneapolis. And you could take the 494 up the west side, but you could also take the 169. They're both freeways. But during rush hour, did I make a mistake here? Because if I did, I'm not going to do this again. This is going to take me up to uh, Interstate 94 on the north side of the city, and then we're going to shoot out of the city, out, out of the northwest side, up towards Canada. this let's keep this up don't do it don't do it I know what you're gonna do I know what you're gonna do good good you can tell when the way some people pass you does it ever happen to you you can tell just the way they're passing you that they're gonna cut you off he was thinking about it he was thinking about it they sort of give themselves away because they sort of pass you a little aggressively. Sometimes they like pop out from behind you really quickly into the next lane. And if not, they'll pass you really quickly and then they'll come right to the front of your bumper and hesitate for a second or two. And you know they're thinking about it. They're thinking about it. And a lot of times they follow through and they do it. So I'm sitting at a gross weight of 77,900 pounds. So it's in everybody's best interest to stay out of my way and get off the road. Trucker Josh needs to go home. And he's real fat right now. My plan is to get right up to Winnipeg tonight. Deliver this first thing at the crack of dawn. And then bring Old Blue for the service she deserves. Gonna you change your oil, gonna you change your filters. Oh yeah, we're 
going to give her the, I'm going to pamper her a bit, give her the first class treatment. Pembina, North Dakota. The border is right there, just down the road, one mile up. I'm waiting for my border clearance. There's a little bit of a mix up. Somebody uh, didn't send in all the paperwork they were supposed to uh, from our shipper. We got picked up. Uh, well, where we picked up, they uh, send it to the broker from there, right? Uh, usually we do that. Uh, but in this case, uh, they send the paperwork away and they forgot to send one very important piece of paper, which is the customs paper. They sent the BOL to the broker and just left it at that. And then uh, I got close to the border here and I still wasn't clear. So I was like, well, what's going on? So I call up the broker and they're like, yeah, we don't have all the paperwork. And uh, we emailed back already to who had sent it saying that we need one more piece and they haven't responded. So I had to get a hold of them there. <laughs> call their uh, night staff and uh, request that that missing paper get sent into the broker, which they did, which was nice. Uh, I wish it would have been sent in in the first place, but I guess it's not a perfect world. But now that paperwork just got through to the border or to the broker, which was cleared just before it got to the, the border now. But now I gotta wait for customs to accept that. I'll have to do a video one day explaining how that all works, but. The broker clears the load for us, that's just how it works, sends it to customs, and then customs has to accept the shipment, and then I can go across. So now I'm waiting for customs, just down the road here, to accept the shipment, and pretty much just press a button and say, yep, come on down, Trigger Josh, come on home. That's how I imagine it in my head anyways. And uh, it's been an hour and a half. since it's been sent to customs cleared already so i might be sitting here till morning now which might mess up my next trip maybe not if everything works out perfect everything it'll be fine but looks like i'm going to be hanging out here for a little bit maybe till morning 
but at least we got everything uh, worked out. I'm just waiting here. And hopefully, uh, you know, at the latest, first thing in the morning, I'll get the notification that says, hey, you're good to cross. Come on back, Trucker Josh. Just seems like whenever I'm in a, like I'm always in a rush, but whenever I'm really like trying to make the most of my time and, uh, you know, I'm trying to make the most of these next two months because I'm going to have some time off in spring uh, when our baby's born. Whenever I try to run hard, there's always hurdles to jump over, roadblocks to navigate around, detours. And I'm talking figuratively here. It's just, it seems like everything just doesn't want to work smoothly. You know, on this last trip, my, my tire went flat and then I had to replace two of my drives. And then that was a whole debacle because I didn't really want the tires that I got, but then I, they sort of grew on me and I think I'm gonna keep them now. But now I've gotta go buy another used tire that has the same tread wear as my old tires so that I can put that on with my old tires so that I can run them down a little further because they got another year that I can run them on. So I want to run those down and then I only have to, I'll keep these new ones that I bought now. And then next year, next fall, I'll only have to buy six, right? And then I'll have a new set. So there's that debacle, that that's, was unexpected and a delay. And because of that delay, it delayed me on my delivery with that lumber this morning in Minnesota. I, was, I could have delivered that the day before, but since I had those flat tires, I had to deliver them the next morning, which delayed me getting to this reload, which I was supposed to load this morning. But because I was delayed unloading, because I was delayed from the tires, that also delayed this shipment, which brings me to where I am right now, late at night sitting here at Pemina waiting to get my paperwork cleared. All because, you know, I had a flat tire. So it's interesting how one single event, sort of like, you know, uh, what's that, uh, the Mandela effect? No, it's not the effect I'm looking for. The butterfly effect. One of those effects, you know. Uh, one little thing happens, you have a flat tire one morning and your whole rest of your week, like, it's just a domino snowball effect. It just affects all your next loads. So I'm hoping that we can break this chain and and stop this av the snowball from turning into an avalanche. If I can get to the yard tomorrow morning, I'll have enough time to get a reset before I leave on my next trip, which is already booked in. And if this delays me too much further, it's gonna delay that load too, which means I might lose that load because that one has to be on time. But if I can get back to the yard tomorrow morning, with enough time to get a reset before I have to leave on the next load at a good time where it'll give me enough time to get to my customer on time. Is this making sense to you? I'm tired right now, I know. I'm trying to make sense. We might stop this from becoming an avalanche if I can just get back. And I'm sitting here waiting for this to clear. But uh, so far, I think I should just head back there and take a nap. I'm just worried because I have some hours left on my clock. If I get cleared now, I can book it across the border and I'll have extra time, right? On Canadian hours of service, and then I can make it further. I'd like to go now, but uh, I'm worried that if I go back there and take a nap, close my eyes, that I'm not gonna open them until morning. And then, you know, there's no hope to stop this snowball domino effect. It's gonna affect my next load then. But not meaning to sound like I'm complaining. I'm just uh, venting a little bit here. And also trying to give you the good, uh, give you the perspective of what the lifestyle is actually like. Some people wanna get into trucking. They wanna know what the lifestyle is like. It's not a good day every day. It's not fun every day. There's a lot of delays. There's a lot of headaches, but through all of that, I still love what I do. I don't want to do anything else. It doesn't mean every day is going to be a perfectly awesome, rainbow, sunshiny day. This is one of those days, and this has been one of those weeks where everything just keeps getting, because of one thing, because of one flat tire, it's sort of messed my whole week up. But we'll get back on our feet. We'll get our head screwed on straight again. Tomorrow's another day, and next week is another week, and it'll get better. 
So thanks for watching today, everybody. Thank you for listening to me. I appreciate that. I like being able to vent a little bit and talk to you guys about the realities of what we deal with out here. We'll see you tomorrow. If you did like my video, feel free to hit that thumbs up button. It gives me a big boost in the algorithm. If you didn't like it, like usual, hit the dislike button twice. And I'll see you tomorrow.